and and if uh, you all uh, attended the inaugural function uh, our director professor mini shaji thomas was telling that earlier we were working on generation system and transmission systems very elaborately a power system engineer means he works on uh, generation system or transmission system but now the scenario is slightly changing and everyone is giving concentration on distribution system so this is the right time to learn about the need of changes required in the distribution system as well as what are the possibilities to improve the efficiency of operating a distribution system both in the planning level as well as in the operational level we have to do lot of changes but anyway we are not going to do something new mostly we use our experience what we gained in the transmission system we are trying to extend to the distribution system okay so whatever the lessons learned in the operation of transmission system is going to get extended to the distribution system so i will be trying to give you some idea about the operation of transmission system as a whole and what are the functionalities we are trying to extend in the distribution system so that the efficiency of distribution system is improved when i say efficiency of distribution system it is not only the technical efficiency the overall efficiency of the system of course technical efficiency is very important in addition to that reliability improvement reducing the time of interruption in the system all those things can be considered as as efficient operation of the system good reliability good quality right so how do we achieve all those things do, do we have those kind of system efficient system at right now what are the drawbacks and how are we going to improve that is going to give us a architecture which is going to be operated in near future that is what the whole idea of the talk which i am going to give you now so i would like to start from a few statistics particularly to the indian power grid our installed capacity total installed capacity of indian power system was around 1.4 gigawatt during our independence later on the installed capacity was keep on increasing and as on march 31st 2017 i can say that after 70 years of independence we reached 326 gigawatt roughly it is roughly i can say that 300 times there is a increase in installed capacity the inst the increase in installed capacity indirectly says that there was a growth continuous growth in electricity demand yes it was there after independence we had lot of industrial revolutions changes in electrification not only to the city electrification is extended to rural areas hilly areas so demand of demand for electrical energy was continuously growing in order to meet that demand installed capacity was increasing so there is no doubt electrical energy can be utilized whenever it is generated or otherwise we can say that you have to utilize the electrical energy whenever it is available you have to utilize of course storage is possible 
but not at the large scale it is very difficult but now right now even large scale storage of electrical energy is also getting practiced with a wonderful research in battery technology may of course we will not discuss that right now so i was telling about the growth of installed capacity it did not stop at this level again it was increasing if you see 2018 the installed capacity was 344 gigawatt and there was a share from a central power plant state power plant and private sector power plant among that 344 gigawatt if we look at this pie chart shown here you can see that the central sector shares 25 percentage of the total installed capacity state sector shares 30 percentage and private sector shares 45 percentage what is this private sector an independent power producer he is not governed by the state government or not governed by the central government he is an independent power producer he can generate power and feed it into the grid based on certain agreement right so private power sector may be a thermal power plant or they may have gas power plant or they may have renewable energy based systems this private sector participation started after 2013 lot of private power producers came up and they started integrating into the grid and they will be able to sell their power through power exchange and this scenario was keep on increasing and very recently if we see by march 31 2020 the installed capacity was 370 gigawatt almost we are reaching 400 gigawatt power generation maybe within next to 2 years we will be crossing 3 uh, 400 gigawatt power generation by 2022 definitely we will have 400 gigawatt of power generation installed capacity so why i want to st stress here it is to show you that we are good in power generation demand is growing and we are able to meet the demand somehow by integrating the whole nation as a single grid one second there was some technical issue so if you see the uh, private sector participation it is keep on increasing earlier it was 45 then 46.6 and now it has reached 46.9 46.9 out of 370 gigawatt right now it is 
सर वी कॉन्ट हेयर यू अलवन सर आई थिंक देर इज अटवर्क इश्यू विथ हिम ही मे जॉइन बैक नाउ Sorry for the inconvenience caused. There is a technical issue from the uh, from his network. So it is sorting out. Hope we'll start the session in two or three minutes. Please be patient. Uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. Now, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is what the uh, share uh, I was discussing, right? Uh, every central power station, as well as state power se uh, power sector, as well as private power sector, are contributing to. our total installed capacity okay and all of you know that our indian grid is divided into uh, five <coughs> regional grids like southern regional grid western eastern northern and north eastern regional grid though it is divided into five regional grids for better operation physically they are interconnected through ac tie lines as well as hvdc long distance transmission lines and back to back stations and very recently in 2013 december the complete indian grid was synchronized with an ac link between the southern grid and western grid before that north northeastern western and eastern grid were operating synchronously southern grid was synchronized with the other part of the nation <coughs> during 2013 so 2013 india has begun one of the largest 
synchronous grid across the world. So this is the path which Indian grid has gone through. You can see five regional grids, then establishment of national grid with HVDC inter-regional links. Then regional grids were synchronized using extra high voltage AC transmission links and AC national grid, otherwise synchronous national grid was established during December 2013. So after that, India has become one nation, one grid and one frequency. Again, why I am stressing this point at this scenario, please understand that we are good at transmission system too. Please understand. We are good at transmission system too. Not only the distribution system, I'm sorry, not only in the generation is keep on increasing. Transmission grid also getting established in an efficient manner. Finally, our system was working in a vertically integrated way. There were large generating stations and these generating stations are interconnected into a transmission grid which is at very high voltage and then the transmission line which is carrying large amount of power is terminated at high voltage substations say 400 kV substations 220 kV substations then further the voltage is reduced and the power is distributed to the consumers. The consumers may be residential consumers, consumers may be residential consumers, commercial consumers, agricultural consumers, industrial consumers and traction consumers. Right? This is how the system was working. Then later on in 2003 electricity act it is stressed to restructure the operation of the total electrical grid they want to debundle de they want to decouple the operation of generation sector transmission sector and distribution sector into different parts which gave birth to different companies. For example, in Tamil Nadu, the Tamil Nadu Electricity Board is made into TAN Jetco and TAN Transco. TAN Jetco, which takes care of generation and distribution in the state. TAN Transco takes care of the transmission system in the state. If we move to another state, say Andhra Pradesh, there we have AP Genco, AP Transco and AP Disco. They have three different companies, generation, transmission and distribution as a separate entity. Operation wise, other than that, if you look a physical network, it is going to be a single network. Right. If you draw a circuit theory anal analysis, it is a network where so many sources are connected and so many loads are connected and we want to find out the current through the lines. It is a single network. Operation wise, they are debundled. So this act of debundling an electrical system has made or has brought lot of changes. 
This is the point where the private participation started heavily, particularly in the generation sector. You can see here, it is no longer utility only. Utility in the sense, it is the government entity, power sector. Generation can be done by anyone. So when this act comes into picture, there, were, there was a competition, right? Suppliers started competing themselves so that the bulk, the price of the bulk power started declining. But however, you look into the other sector, transmission sector, which is handled by the utility itself, because the infrastructure involved in transmission network is huge, but the income is very less. So transmission network is owned by the utility. No private party will be ready to take up the transmission network. Because what inverse more and more returns is going to be very less. Because only the users of the network is going to pay certain money, which is going to be very less. And in other words, the transmission network is going to carry or they are the interface between the generators and the load. And when we say that the word grid, immediately what comes to our mind is this large transmission network. So that should be operated very stable manner. So when you want to operate it in a stable manner, there should be a supervisor looking into the operation of the transmission system. When there is a debundling, anybody can produce power and feed in the grid. As a consumer, any state can purchase power from any other state or any other IPP, independent power producer, by making an agreement power purchase agreement. So when this is happening, as a business it is okay, as a separate company it is okay, but finally when it comes to a real-time operation, the electrical energy has to flow through the transmission network and it should not overload or it should not create any abnormal conditions in the transmission network. So there, there is a need for an independent entity to look into the operation of the transmission network, which gave birth to system operator or independent system operator, ISO, or transmission network operator. The naming is different in different countries. Then we will come to the distribution company. Distribution company may be owned by the utility or even it can be privatized. Now we have private distribution companies doing service in our country. So now we are living in a restructured environment, please understand, we are living in a restructured environment where anybody can feed power into the grid based on the agreement. Similarly, any state can purchase power from any other state or from any other independent power producers by making an agreement without violating any technical constraints of the transmission network. So there is an operator who takes care of this secure 
operation of the system. That person is ISO or transmission system operator. Okay, right. So now, as I said, the independent power producers are coming into picture. Mostly, they will be concentrating on integration of renewable energy sources because we are talking about reduction in emission. We are talking about conserving fossil fuels and government is making lot of new plans in order to promote the integration of renewable energy. So mostly 90% of the independent power producers will concentrate on renewable energy based electricity generation. We can see from this picture that there is a continuous growth in the renewable energy integration into the grid. Now we have almost 90 gigawatt, 90 gigawatt from renewable. So by 2020, we may reach around 100 gigawatt. The previous slide I said approximately we may get 400 gigawatt total installed capacity in that one fourth is going to be from renewable. So again, I want to stress the third point here, the growth in renewable energy is also good. We are on par with other countries in the world in power generation, power transmission, as well as integration of renewable into the grid. This is the structure, what you can see here is the structure of Indian power system. How does it operate? There are different players, as I said, generation, central state, IPPs, and central transmission unit, which is Power Grid Corporation of India. And we have state transmission utility, which is the state transco, TAN transco, AP transco, or the state transmission utility. And we have DISCOMS, private distribution company, or the utility owned distribution company. In addition to that, we have a transmission system operator called as Osoko, our system operation corporation, Osoko. They are taking care of the secure operation of the system. I can, Tamil Nadu can purchase power from Maharashtra. Tamil Nadu can purchase power from Karnataka. Tamil Nadu can purchase power from an independent power producer available at West Bengal. This power transaction happens through a power exchange. So business will happen. That is a market operations. But other side, technical issues should be taken care. There should not be any insecure operation. That is assured by Osoko. They are called as system operator. So we are very good at our generation and transmission level. Here I am showing you a few pictures which I shot in a power generation plant where they have a sophisticated control system, automatic control system in order to control the generation plant. I visited gen thermal generating power station, thermal power station when I was doing my undergraduate and two years before I visited thermal power station, I could see a drastic change in the control room. And the station is 
receiving all the information from the grid. And all of you know that our Indian grid frequency is regulated by a mechanism called ABT, Availability Based Tariff. All the central power generating stations are operating based on the ABT tariff and which they will be able to receive signal from the national grid as well as they will be able to control very efficiently. Similarly, if you look into the transmission structure, there also a complete automation is there. Measurements are done in real time and the real time data are transmitted to the control center where the operators will be able to see the complete picture of the transmission grid on a single screen with indications on low voltage, over voltage, whether a substation is in operation, substation capacitors are on or off, or a series compensation is provided to the system or not, such all informations are available on a single screen, which makes them to take quick decisions. And there are so many tools to aid them in order to take quick decisions and action on the system because the transmission system is very critical. If it collapses, bringing back the system takes a long time. All of you know that if there is a blackout, restoration of the complete system takes a long time. During that period, there will not be any power and industries cannot run so there will be a lot of financial loss to the customers as well as to the power producers. So in order to avoid that, we need a secure operation of the transmission grid. Of course, it is available. So we have appreciable amount of automatic control system in the transmission sector in order to ensure effective operation in order to ensure market transactions, to maintain security, as well as to facilitate integrated operation of the generators located geographically anywhere in the nation. Right? But you look at this picture now, I was discussing about generation sector, transmission sector very well, which has sophisticated control system, real time measurements, quick decisions and quick actions to rectify the problem in the transmission grid. And when I show this picture, you can see that a portion of the picture is very clear and other side I have shown you a black box. Other side, I have shown you a black box. What can you infer from this? The inference is the transmission grid is The transmission grid is very transparent. When I say the transmission grid is very transparent, what do you understand? You can understand that we are able to visualize the performance of the transmission grid in real time. We are able to visualize the changes in the parameter in real time. Based on that, actions can be taken. But if you move towards a low voltage distribution system, 
where actually the consumers are connected directly, transparency is missing. The system parameters are not monitored continuously. That's why it is shown as a black box. People talks about electricity stealing. People talks about people talk about unmetered data. And people talk about ATNC loss, aggregated technical and commercial loss, which is happening in the distribution system is huge. Real time measurements are missing here. So the operator will not be able to understand what has happened to the system in real time or what is happening to the system. Of course, we have measurements at the consumer end for the energy consumption, which is monitored once in a month or once in two months in some states. In between, the measurements are not taken, electrical parameter, let it be a voltage. Some consumers may receive a poor voltage, consumer may receive an over voltage, which is not taken into account in real time. If there is an, any issue or if there is any complaint made by the customer, it is attended. It takes its own time to set it correct. So please keep that in mind. Now we will see what is available inside this black box that is a distribution system, distribution network. Mostly the distribution network is operated in a radial fashion. Sometimes distribution networks are built in a meshed configuration, but of course, during operation, their radiality is maintained. The radial structure is chosen just to minimize the protection requirement. A mere overcurrent protection will do the job of protecting the system. So anywhere there is a fault in that distribution network, there will be a current flow from the substation to that point. So you can only unidirectional flow, not like a transmission network, which is having a meshed configuration, which is having a meshed configuration and bidirectional power flow. In the distribution network, flow of both real and reactive power was always from higher voltage to the lower voltage point. That itself says that as you move away from this feeding point, your voltage is going to reduce. And this network is considered to be passive. There is no active elements. Network is considered to be passive. This is what the scenario. But now what is happening? Renewable energy is getting promoted. Use of renewable energy is getting promoted. Where can I have renewable energy generation? You can have renewable energy generation wherever the energy is available. 
of course we are mainly depending on solar power and wind power as a renewable energy particularly in india so when you have this solar and wind it is spread over the nation anywhere i can generate and as an, as an electrical engineer we can understand that if the generation is very near to my load there will be a reduction in voltage drop similarly there will be a reduction in power loss because power is not traveling over a long distance when i have generation very near to the load so i can reduce voltage drop i can reduce power loss happening in the network when i have generations very near to the load earlier it has not done because it has not been done near to the consumers because we were concentrating on bulk power generation systems thermal power plant hydro power plant you need a specific site to construct that and we will be constructing power plant in terms of 100 megawatt 1000 megawatt and more than that so you need a space you need to protect the people living from any dangers that may happen in a power plant so power plants were constructed far away from the load point but now our concentrated concentration is on renewable power generation which is not harmful there is not much danger so this solar power generation and wind power generation or any other renewable power generating stations can be connected near the loads that gave an idea of distributed generation instead of constructing a 100 megawatt power plant why don't i construct 10 10 megawatt power plant or 101 megawatt power plants that is called as a distributed power generation the total capacity is going to get distributed one way other way the power generation is geographically distributed in that way also we can define distributed generation so this distributed generations are connected near the load centers or loading points in the distribution network which makes the distribution network no longer passive now it becomes active power flow becomes reversed earlier in the absence of this dg2 which is connected in node number 15 i can assure that before the integration of dg2 definitely the power flows from node 14 to node 15. Now I cannot say because I have a generator connected at that point. If there is a generation and load at point 15 is less than power generated from DG2, there may be a flow of power from 15 to 14. It's all depend upon the generation. Please note the word, it's all depend upon the generation provided by distributed generator. So the last statement you can read, power flow and voltages are determined by the loads as well as generations available locally. This gave lot of advantages. As well as there are certain challenges, of course. So when you have 
a generation in the distribution network at the consumer side then it is called as distributed generation why people thought about distributed generation we discussed but still i list here first we were thinking about a standby power supply for example you consider our institute campus nit institute campus it is connected to the local distribution network if there is no power from that substation we have to feed the net nit campus with the help of diesel generator it is a standby power supply diesel generator is one kind of distributed generation so i want a standby power supply so people thought okay i will have a distributed generator but why it is not operated even when the grid is out when the grid is available i will come back to this question later i want to utilize renewable energy sources so i am going for distributed generation yes nit campus has say around 250 kilowatt solar plant installed this 250 kilowatt is a distributed generation even that 250 kilowatt is distributed geographically 100 kilowatt at one place another 100 kilowatt another place 50 kilowatt at different places roughly 250 kilowatt installation which is operating parallel to the grid but diesel generators of course we have around 1500 kva diesel generator is available again in a distributed manner but they are not operated in parallel with the grid the solar plant which is 250 kilowatt is operated in parallel with the grid it's why it is because of the cost solar distributed generation i'm not inversing anything on fuel but diesel if i want to operate as a distributed generation in parallel with the grid i have to run the diesel generator i have to spend money on the diesel it is expensive so diesel generator is now considered to be only a standby power supply assume there is a situation where 1 liter diesel is say 2 rupees we cannot imagine such a day definitely it is very very difficult if that is the case then i will use diesel generator instead of purchasing power from the grid during that time solar is also distributed generator my diesel generator is also distributed generator. please understand right and this dg avoids siting problems because it is small compact extremely clean if i want to make 1 kilowatt solar power generation system i can make it if i want to make 5 kilowatt i can make it if i want to build 1 megawatt solar power plant i can make it if i have 5 acres of land or 5 acres of space definitely i can make it 1 megawatt and i can keep on increasing the capacity slowly while the existing system is in operation so there is no problem with respect to siting and finally the restructuring uh, which i talk later here uh, the independent power producers they wanted to have only renewable power generation based systems so they started utilizing renewable energy in a large scale and they connected integrated into the grid so renewable energy integration is happening 
at large scale as well as at small scale. Large scale as well as at small scale. Please understand. Renewable power generation is happening at large scale and as well as at the small scale. The large scale integration is different, which is connected at a very high voltage level. And they trade directly with the transmission system operator through transmission system operator to the consumers. That is large scale renewable energy integration. Now our concentration is on small scale integration, which is done at the consumer end. We have different types of energy sources operated as distributed generator. It can be a micro turbine, it can be a fuel cell or solar cell, biomass, it can be a wind turbine and energy storage devices like battery, flywheel, ultra capacitor. They can store energy and whenever we need the energy can be released in the small scale. So these energy storage devices also can be considered as distributed generators, distributed energy storage devices. This distributed energy devices or energy sources connected at the distribution network like this along with a group of loads right along with a group of loads here like this distributed generator along with group of loads is called as a microgrid. A microgrid is cluster of loads and distributed resource units serviced by a distribution grid. At the same time, a microgrid is capable of operating in grid connected mode or operating in an autonomous highlanded mode. You assume a NIT Trichy Institute power system. As I said, we have 1500 kVA diesel generated in the distributed way, 750 kVA, another 500 kVA, 125 kVA. So say 1500 kVA we have which is not connected when the grid power is available. But when the grid power is not available, these diesel generators are switched on to feed the loads, cluster of loads. So now I can say that NIT3C campus is a microgrid fed by the diesel generators. That mode of operation is called as an autonomous mode of operation. Grid is not dictating anything. It is an autonomous mode. The diesel generators feeds the load and they dictate the voltage and frequency of the power network inside the canvas. Now suddenly the grid power comes. Diesel generators, all the diesel generators are switched off because it is very expensive. At the same time, I said we have around 250 kilowatt solar power plant. Now that comes into operation in parallel with the grid. And I have loads. Now also, the canvas of NAD Trichy can be considered as a microgrid because I have a cluster of loads, I have a distributed generator, which is the solar power plant, and connected to the grid. It is the grid connected mode of a microgrid. So a microgrid can be operated in grid connected mode. It can be operated in autonomous mode. It should have a capability to change over from 
islanded mode to grid connected mode grid connected mode to island you can see this picture it shows an example of a microgrid every color you can consider as a microgrid so this is a microgrid where you have a generator and some group of nodes even this small space can be considered as a microgrid one customer with his own generation can be considered as a microgrid this is a single consumer or a customer with his own generation is considered as a microgrid then here multiple consumers with a generating station can be considered as a microgrid these two small microgrids can be connected together to form this green color that is also a microgrid so by definition a microgrid means a cluster of loads fed by distributed power generating sources and having a capability to connect to the grid or in an islanded mode of operation that is called as a microgrid further i am showing some structure of the microgrid a residential consumer formulate a microgrid along with his own generation and his load or a group of consumers commercial user he can have his own diesel generator or even he can own his gas turbine power plant along with some energy storage devices assume that it is a shopping complex he can own his own generator for backup he may have a energy storage and simultaneously is connected to the grid so when he is getting disconnected from the grid he can be considered as a microgrid in the islanded mode when he has he is connected with the grid it can be considered as a grid connected operation of the mode a microgrid but now actually a very consumers who are having their own power backup see we may have a battery inverter system at my home i can consider my home as a microgrid but only thing whenever the grid power is available we are not using the battery power parallelly that's why we call that as a backup power if we use grid power and battery power parallelly then it becomes a grid connected microgrid that happens when you have a solar power generation at your house which is feeding the battery as well as feeding the loads if grid is there it does not draw any power from the grid till the power generation is sufficient for supplying the load at our house so we are forming a microgrid right hope you might have understood what is microgrid again this picture shows a distributed generator along with a group of loads form a microgrid so this can be considered as a microgrid this can be considered as a microgrid and these two microgrids are connected to the main grid and there are additional loads which are also connected to the main grid. as i said it can have an autonomous mode of operation or non autonomous mode of operation autonomous mode oh, yes it is good it serves the customers without any grid support without grid all the customers loads are fed by the local power generation during that time 
in a non autonomous sorry autonomous mode of operation you cannot depend on only one power generating source it is because most of the renewable power generation are intermittent in nature they will not be able to produce continuous power output sometimes the power output may go down sometimes the power output rises it it's all depends on <coughs> the climatic conditions so whenever you form the microgrid we always prefer to have more than one source and one backup like a battery one energy storage let it be a battery or any other kind of energy storage so hybrid microgrid hybrid sources are preferred to form a microgrid in autonomous mode non autonomous mode there is no problem you can have a solar powered microgrid which is connected to the grid so during the non autonomous mode if solar power decreases i can draw power from the main grid so there is no problem we can depend on a single source in a non autonomous mode of operation but in autonomous mode of operation always hybrid sources are preferred please remember what are the advantages or what are the significance of this microgrid high local reliability even the grid fails i will have power supply grid fails i have power supply so reliability is increased optimal usage of energy the grid is giving me conventional power generated from fossil fuels i am generating from renewable energy sources so i will try to use my own generation first which comes free of cost which comes without any emission if that energy is not sufficient i will go for buying power from the grid so optimal usage of energy is possible in a microgrid considerable reduction of losses yes i said if i formulate a microgrid i am going to have generation near my load so power need not travel from a long distance that will reduce power loss in the line reduction of transmission and distribution cost once the power loss reduces or the power flow reduces i can reduce the investment on the network so that will reduce the cost continuity of service at remote locations again that stresses the reliability of the system even at the remote locations we will be able to produce power and use electricity so now i am going to show you a typical structure of a microgrid which can be operated in autonomous and non autonomous mode you can have a dc microgrid or ac microgrid it depends upon the load what i am going to feed right now we are all living with ac loads so we can have an ac microgrid but some of the renewable energy sources are producing power directly in dc which has to be converted into ac right so when you want to go for a hybrid sources there is a question where i am going to integrate at the dc level i will integrate the sources or at the ac level i will integrate the sources so there are multiple architecture available we can choose our own architecture which is comfortable for us it depends upon what kind of renewable energy sources we are using and how what kind of reliability we need based on that we can choose the structure of the micro so here what is chosen is a multi string configuration all the renewable energy sources are integrated at the d 
DC side. For example, say here solar panel, which gives DC, battery, which is also giving DC. If I have a wind farm with a DC generator, I will connect that. If I have an AC generator, mostly the small scale wind turbines are coming with PMS, permanent magnet synchronous generator, which is going to provide you a variable frequency, variable voltage. So it is better to convert into DC and feed into DC's bus. So all the integration happens at the DC because synchronization is also very simple in the DC side. We go to AC, synchronization becomes little tedious. So synchronize all the renewable energy sources at the DC side, feed the DC power to a inverter to get converted into AC and the AC can be fed to the load. And at the AC side, I can have a synchronization with a diesel generator for backup or I can have connection to the grid so that I can go to a non-autonomous mode of operation. So this is a microgrid, uh, which is using a 2.5 kilowatt PV, a 2 kilowatt wind energy conversion system, and a battery bank for backup. They are all integrated at the DC side, 120 volt DC bus and we have an inverter to convert this into AC which is feeding all AC loads and there is a diesel generator which is synchronized at the AC side. Instead of diesel generator I can have grid at this point in order to make this microgrid to operate in grid connected or non-autonomous mode of operation. When it is connected to the grid, if power generation from PV, wind or sufficient to meet out the load, it doesn't draw any power from the grid. Otherwise, it takes power from the grid to meet out the power balance. If it is not connected to the grid, if it is not connected to the grid, then what happens? If sufficient generation is available, no problem. If sufficient generation is not available, power from the battery will be taken to maintain the power balance. You cannot discharge battery for a long time. When its state of charge goes to a certain level, then we have to depend on the diesel generator. This is what the operation of a microgrid shown here. The single line, line diagram of the same system is shown here. We will come back to this CL and CL later. Okay. This is a typical configuration of a microgrid. I can have different configurations. As I said, I need not have a DC, common DC bus. I can inter, I can have an individual inverter and synchronize at the AC side. That is also possible. But this method of doing a common DC bus makes the operation very simple. Then, we have to maintain a power balance always in the microgrid system. If there is no power balance, you know there will be a drop in voltage, there will be a change in frequency, so many things. So the power balance should be maintained. Here, the sources are intermittent, wind, solar. So we cannot maintain always the power balance, it is very difficult. We cannot have the loads connected to the system always so that it is met. Sometimes we may face an insufficient power generation. During that time, we need to manage the loads. 
actually we are changing the operation of the power system from load driven operation to generation driven operation when we go for this renewable energy based microgrid now the load curve is given based on the load curve the conventional power plants are operated so it is a load driven system now we do not have any conventional power plant here except this diesel generator which we are going to use only during the emergency situation we are having renewable power generation we cannot have a load driven approach we need to have a generation driven approach according to the generation availability i have to use the loads so here instead of unit commitment done generation scheduling done at the generation plants based on the load curve now we have to do load scheduling based on the available power generation in order to schedule that we have to classify we have to prioritize the loads critical loads non critical loads or essential loads non essential loads in that way if power generation decreases i need to stop the operation of non essential loads or non critical loads so in order to maintain a power balance in order to maintain stability of the microgrid definitely we need a microgrid controller or i can say that microgrid energy management system which is available in the transmission network i said posoko is taking care of this right power balance in this system real power balance reactive power balance in the system here also we need real power balance and reactive power balance so we need a controller in the microgrid or microgrid energy management system which should be built manually i can do it that is one manually also i can operate this manual operation so suddenly there is a power uh, power reduction in the generation side i can switch off some loads i can do it manually no problem only thing the time involved time response is going to be which is high so during that time there is a possibility of collapse of the system in order to avoid that collapse we are having battery so if there is any power imbalance the battery will feed so that it may so battery acts as a kinetic energy storage like in a central grid all thermal power plants rotating machines they have kinetic energy here the battery bank acts as a kinetic energy it releases the energy immediately to meet of the demand but if we keep allowing the battery drains in order to avoid that we have to reduce the load that can be done manually no problem at all if you do it system will work but i don't want to do manually i want to have an automation here so i need a controller here this is the transition from a microgrid to an automated microgrid so i am going to have a yeah, controller when i say controller we are not going to build a analog controller it is a computerized controller or microprocessor based controller or an embedded system based controller will be available right so here you can see the uh, photograph of the microgrid what i discussed which is built in our laboratory with a microgrid controller the controller is developed with the help of fpga board which senses the available power generation based on that it schedules the loads if the generation is less load is more it regulates the load it controls the load if the generation is more it sees whether loads are available if the loads are available even sometimes we need to cut the generation 
whenever the battery also getting completely charged i have to reduce the generation so we need to have generation side control as well as load side control if we do with an embedded system controller i can say an embedded controller or micro grid is done but there is a problem what is the problem the loads are again distributed sources are also again distributed where do you keep the controller so i need a centralized place to keep the controller and i need information from source end i need information from the load side or i have to pass the command to the load side to disconnect or connect the loads so now think about the transmission system they are doing the same thing there is a centralized energy management system located at the regional load dispatch centers state load dispatch centers they dictate the substation operators to connect or disconnect feeders feeding certain area it can be over phone or it can be done automatically by telemetering and telecommanding that's i want to implement in the microgrid this is what i said initially we are not going to do anything new we learned some lessons from the transmission sector operation that we are going to extend in the distribution network so i want certain kind of communication to be established inside my network because sources are distributed loads are distributed i want a centralized control system to manage the stability of the microgrid as well as switching over from autonomous mode to non autonomous mode non autonomous mode to autonomous mode so we are going to have a communication in this work the communication is established through a ethernet wired network again i can go with any kind of communication wired or wireless understand okay so these are some additional pictures uh, during the implementation of the project and we need to have a monitoring system what is happening to the grid grid parameters power generation so what is available in energy management system i have shown you a snapshot a complete power flow in the transmission line complete power generation in the system is shown on a screen similarly i want to develop for a micro grid in order to monitor the operation of the micro yes it can be done so now you see the micro grid in the <coughs> large distribution network i can have so many micro grids am i right i said in nitrogen campus which is having a uh, total maximum demand of 2.5 megawatt can be considered as a micro grid because i have local power generation sources nearby we have a bhl township they may have 10 megawatt maximum demand more than 10 megawatt i say it is very less because it is an industry they also have a 5 megawatt solar power plant so they are also a micro grid connected to the system so in a city distribution network i may have multiple micro grids connected to the system so when all the micro grids are in grid connected mode of operation to think about the system if all the micro grid generations are less than their load demand no problem if they are more than their load demand and they feed power into the grid if it is permitted every micro grid can feed power into the grid so during the all the operation of the micro grid reduces the net load demand in the total grid which improves the voltage profile in the network which improves the voltage profile in the network minimizes the losses very good advantages but suddenly 
there may be a loop, there may be a shutdown of a particular microgrid. Then power generation drops because of that more power flow into that microgrid loads. For example, I consider microgrid 2. Suddenly all the power generation available in microgrid 2 got shut down. But loads are still there. It is connected in the grid connected mode. So suddenly the grid sees more loads, more power flow to that particular area. Because of that, there will be a voltage drop. Then I need to operate the voltage regulators which are located at various places in order to maintain the voltage profile. And again, suddenly that microgrid may pick up generation. Then voltage will boost up. During that time, I have to coordinate these regulators to reduce their setting so that the voltage profile is maintained and no loads see a over voltage. So there is a coordinated operation is required. A coordinated operation is required. So we need a manager for a distribution system. So we introduce a DMS distribution management system. A distribution management system monitors the overall operation of the distribution network, which consists of more than one microgrids. Yeah, this picture will give you an idea. See, there is a transmission system where the bulk power generation stations are connected and renewable energy, large scale renewable energy is integrated into the transmission grid and power purchase or uh, power sale is happening through a wholesale energy market. And the distribution system has so many microgrids. Again, same renewable energy, but only thing in small scale, near the loads. So we call that it's a microgrid and these microgrids are connected in the grid connected operation. So what is expected, the capacity of this microgrid is keep on increasing and which may cause a reverse power flow into the grid. So you need a very good monitoring system which is lacking now. Whenever this microgrid goes down, whenever the microgrid comes up with generation, is not noticed, not monitored because of that distribution system faces certain problem. Okay, I will list the characteristics of the present distribution system, which is very extensive. Some distribution network is passive, some are limitedly active and same network may move from passive to active and active to passive. It depends upon the power generation, local power generation available. If power generation is available, it is active. If it is not available, then it is a passive network. That is the situation. That is the situation. Limited communication or no communication at all. That is the present situation. No real time monitoring. Either the voltage being offered to a load or current drawn by the load. Of course, it is monitored for bulk power consumers. If they draw more non sinusoidal current, there is a question uh, what are the possibilities to consider next generation? Uh, you please uh, wait till the end, then I can give you or you will find the answer from the lecture itself. Uh, Real-time monitoring is not there. Bulk power consumers are penalized if they operate with low power factor, if they operate with higher THD, but not all the consumers. Similarly, 
the power consumers started feeding power into the grid and the power injection into the grid is not continuously monitored because of that there is a voltage fluctuation happening that is also not monitored very little interaction between the loads and the power system so even after establishing microgrid technically we are reducing the power loss technically we are improving the voltage profile but operating the system becomes little complex if more and more microgrids are getting integrated then this level of complexity in operating a distribution system will increase for that we have to add so many capabilities into the system i have to predict what is going to happen i have to adapt something is happening i have to adapt the grid to the behavior of the loads or behavior of the generators and i have to optimize i have to utilize the assets distribution transformers distribution line in a better manner to reduce the atnc loss i should increase interactivity consumer should be made more interactive monitoring control protection and maintenance should be integrated in the distribution network again i i'll say that in transmission grid is all available they are predicting they are optimizing they are integrate interacting and they have integrated operation but in the distribution side where now micro grids are increasing in number we are lacking in all these points so in order to equip the distribution network with all these features the what we need is the existing passive or limitedly active power distribution network should be embedded with little intelligence and information exchange please note this is again not new we have in the transmission sector where we have a large network large power generation plants state electricity boards or the power consumers and there are load dispatch centers where the information exchange is happening and they have lot of tools to take decision intelligent operation is done so that learning i want to bring into this power distribution network so when we include this information exchange and intelligence into the power distribution network the network becomes smart a normal microgrid becomes a smart microgrid okay a microgrid is purely electrical it has cluster of loads fed by distributed power generation and capable of operating alone or integrated with grid main grid that is a microgrid if you have a strong information exchange between the microgrid and its controller as well as to a master controller and the decisions are taken efficiently based on real time measurement in order to improve the reliability of the distribution network with microgrid then the distribution network becomes a smart microgrid right a normal microgrid to embed information exchange capability and some kind of intelligence with the help of artificial intelligence tools what is that artificial just prediction you might have heard about the lecture morning first session wind energy prediction that is very much required right which is very much required prediction solar prediction 
local power generation prediction, local demand prediction, then we can have a stable operation of the grid. So smart grid is defined as defined by United States Department of Energy as it uses digital technology to improve reliability, security, and efficiency of the electric system from large generation through delivery system to electricity consumers and a growing number of distributed generation and storage resources. Similarly, European definition is available. The definition gives the same meaning but with different words that's all intelligently interact all users connected to the grid in short uk has its own definition it says that you have to have sensors embedded processor digital communication for what in order to make the grid absorbable automated operation India also has given a definition for smart grid in Indian Electricity Act 2003, which is amended in 2018. Smart grid means an electricity network that uses information and communication technology to gather information and act intelligently in automated manner to improve efficiency reliability, economics, and sustainability of generation, transmission, and distribution. Right? So mainly we have to concentrate on distribution network. That's what I said. Other parts, generation and transmission sectors were well-established techniques. That's why we are now concentrating on distribution network. I hope now you will be able to distinguish between a microgrid and a smart grid. If we apply ICT and make an automated operation with an intelligent tools, then it becomes smart grid. Even without this ICT and without any intelligence tools, you can operate a mi microgrid. That is not the smart grid. It is a mere microgrid, local power generation, feeding a local load. I repeat the communication we are using for the operation of the system long back. Now we are trying to extend our usage of communication network in the distribution network up to the consumers, residential consumers, commercial consumers and industrial consumers. Right? We are extending the operation. There is a comparison between the today's grid and the smart grid that we will be able to read from the literature. So I skip. So what is the expected outcome of smart grid? Smart grid enables utilities to increase energy productivity, power reliability, with empowering the customers to better manage their electricity usage through real-time information exchange. That is what the word which is stressed. If real-time information exchange is there and you are able to make a control action or a decision making for preventive maintenance or preventive action based on the real-time measurements, then a microgrid becomes a smart microgrid. So this is how the next generation distribution system is going to be. Not only the real power support, we need reactive power support also in the system. We are all heard about inverters, statcom, so those devices, custom power devices are going to support us with the help of reactive power. Actually, a revolution is happening in the distribution network with the help of internet, 
information and communication technology one revolution second revolution is with the help of renewable sources in order to reduce the toxic gas emissions and to conserve electricity third kind of revolution in terms of measurement every distribution network is going to be provided with smart meters which can provide real time information exchange so these three are the revolutions which is going to make our distribution network into a microgrid and from a microgrid into a smart microgrid i can say that a sustainable grid is the smart grid so when i say sustainable grid there are going to be two points which you have to keep in that mind energy generation from renewable sources second point energy conservation and efficient energy management using ict information and communication technology right i show you a few laboratory implementation here so please remember or please recollect what i have said when i want to improve the efficiency of the distribution network that is what our motto now in order to improve the efficiency of the distribution network we are concentrating on setting up a microgrid so microgrid means i'm definitely i will use renewable power generation sources because they are very scalable when i use renewable power sources definitely i will not depend on a single source because it is intermittent i will go with a hybrid source so when you develop a microgrid you need to go for hybrid sources first point second point when you have a microgrid it should have a capability to operate in autonomous mode and in non autonomous mode non autonomous mode there is no problem grid can take care of any disturbances in the system but in autonomous mode you have to maintain power balance both real and reactive power balance so you need a microgrid controller or a microgrid energy management system okay then when you have a multiple microgrids you need a common system manager which is a distribution management system which needs real time measurements from every consumer as well as every distribution transformer every location of the distribution network in order to ensure a secure operation of the system so for that you need a smart meter which will be able to provide you real time information exchange by directional real time information exchange through any ict information and communication technology there was question from a participant that iot yes you can use iot in order to connect the smart meter to a distribution management system internet you can use you can use a local network with the help of wimax right so you need a real time information exchange from a metering point to the distribution management system so when you have your data in the network everywhere you can access it will be beneficial to the consumer as well as to the supply provider service provider as well as the grid operator and this smart meter project is also going on in india continuously and the amended electricity act says the new ser services should be provided with either smart meter or prepayment meter so when you have this real time information exchange we are going to superimpose a communication network on the existing power network this picture shows you a communication network 
inside the house i may have my own power generation and i may have my own loads which should be scheduled so i will be having a communication that is called as a home area network and as i said i may have smart meter at every consumer and at the distribution network distribution transformer i want to collect the real time data so i will be having a neighborhood area network all this collected data should be transferred to the distribution management system where we will be having a wide area network connecting all the data collectors located in the distribution network so in future we are going to have a home like this smart home we will have our own power generation we will have our own electric vehicle we will have smart appliances and so when all these things are available i can consider this as a microgrid when it is connected to the grid it is called as microgrid operating in non autonomous mode otherwise it is an non autonomous mode so when i have autonomous mode definitely i need a controller to maintain a power balance i said you right so inside every house we will be having an energy management system that is called as home energy management system so please think our house is a microgrid and there was there is a question what is microgrid what is mini grid and what is nano grid it's all based on the power level what you find a house with say a microgrid with say 2 kilowatt in power installation and 3 kilowatt load you can consider it is a nano grid some more higher level of power generation and load say up to 1 megawatt 2 megawatt say up to 5 megawatt you can say it is a micro grid it's on the power level at which there is no a very standard clear cut definition says yeah, up to this level it is nano grid up to this level it is micro grid because you can combine all nano grid to make a micro grid when it is in the grid connected operation connected together you can combine so many micro grids to form a grid right so you cannot define that very clearly we cannot put a border line but approximately if the capacity is less than 5 kilowatt then you can consider as a nano grid if the capacity is less than 5 megawatt then you can consider it as a micro grid so we are going to have a home energy management system within our house to manage energy then we will be having micro grid i'm sorry micro grid energy management system and we will have distribution energy management system and then we have a energy management system at the load dispatch center this is how our architecture the control architecture is going to get developed i skip few slides which is not required so this slide shows you the layered control architecture of the complete power system you will have a controller inside your house you will have a controller in a, in your living area say a township you will be having a controller to control your city network then you will be having a controller to control your state network so in future the power system is going to have lot of automation in this area which is the distribution network we will be having home energy controllers smart meter grid integration of distributed generation available at house or we can say that in house power generation so when you have in house power generation we are going to be called as prosumers not consumers we are going to be called as prosumers this is the uh, control structure or a control architecture which we are going to have key hence home energy management system then microgrid energy management system if you have 
energy storage battery management system then at the higher level we will be having uh, dms distributed this is d e r m s distributed energy resources management system adms advanced distribution management system then above this we have the transmission energy management system right now we have this transmission energy management system is available in future we are going to have all these things so this is the communication architecture what we are going to have as i said home area network smart meter interfaces home area network with neighborhood area network and neighborhood area network transfers the data to a wide area network this will take this to the meter data management system which is available in the sorry which is going to be available in dms distribution management system this is an another way of representing the communication showing the communication network uh, which is going to help converting the microgrid into a smart microgrid so i stop at this point with a quote which i like very much never So in this, when you read this, you just replace the U with V. If we think we know everything, we will never learn anything. Of course, we are all teachers and research scholars. Uh, we are here to learn every day. That's why we are attending these kind of workshops, faculty development programs. So we are all want for learning continuously okay. thank you thank you for your patient listening i would like to acknowledge all my research scholars who contributed a lot so that i could learn about microgrid and smart grid and i thank you the participants for your uh, patient listening and the organizers for giving me an opportunity I hope I made uh, you clear about the basic architecture of a microgrid and when it becomes a smart microgrid. If you have any queries, I will take up. I understand that there are few queries available in the chat box. Uh, let me see a few. Thank you, sir, for your detailed and informative session covering evolution of electric grid and vertically integrated to a restructured power system with respect to Indian scenario, architecture of present grid, effect of DG in distribution network, microgrid and its different mode of operation, need for microgrid controller for an auto automated microgrid, how a distribution network is converted to a smart microgrid and future power system operation. The session is now open for discussion. I would now read out the queries posted by the participants. The first query uh, is, what are the possible research gaps to focus for next generation distribution system? What are the possible research gaps to focus for next generation distribution system? Yeah, research gap is available everywhere. See, when you formulate a microgrid, uh, we have a lot of research scope. Um, we have to depend on uh, integrating different renewable energy sources into a common point where you have scope for working on the power electronic converters which are going to transfer energy from the normal uh, power generation devices like solar panel, wind power plant into the common integrating point. So there is a 
focus you can focus on that if you are uh, interested towards foreign electronics if you are interested in the control the power balance there are a uh, scope available to build the energy management systems like residential energy management system uh, demand side energy management system because to talk it is very easy but when you implement it energy management system implementation needs lot of signal acquisition and decision making with the help of different tools so there is a research gap available in building a energy management system at residential level or at the distribution level then the third point what you can think is the forecasting the load forecasting is also very very essential in the future operation of the grid load forecasting as well as the energy generation forecasting please understand it is a very intermittent energy and everyone is trying to install their own power generation at their building when it happens more power generation beyond their need will be fed into the grid so if you predict it properly if you predict it properly there is an another era going to come up called transactive energy or a retail energy market of course you will be having a, a detailed lecture on that point in uh, next few lectures i understand from the schedule so i did not concentrate on that so when you have a transactive energy you will be able to make a business of sales selling your extra generation available at your hand right so you need lot of market mechanisms to be developed communication is required what kind of communication you can use in this ham in this uh, neighborhood area network there is a focus you can and in addition to that security which is not talked here there is a separate section on cyber security aspects we will get to know about when you have this real time data exchange how important the security is so for every kind of people let it be a power system engineer let it be a power electronic engineer let it be an instrumentation engineer let it be a communication engineer you have scope to contribute in the future power distribution system only thing as stressed by our director you need collaboration as a power system engineer we will not be able to learn everything so there is a collaborative work required you need knowledge and communication you need knowledge and computer networking so a collaborative work is required for the future power distribution system sir uh one there is one query related if there is any training centers which are providing training on microgrid ems uh as far as uh, i understand there is no training centers available uh, but training centers are available only for the uh, utility staff utility staff after they get recruited they undergo training power grid has their own training center and uh, uh, our uh, director madam uh, has set up her own uh, scada training center in her university in uh, delhi so those training centers are used by the employee of utility or a distribution companies uh, for a common man there is no uh, training centers available as far as uh, my knowledge is concerned okay sir now uh, how the overall efficiency of a particular solar pv plant and wind power plant is calculated overall efficiency of solar power plant and wind power plant is calculated uh, if you talk about a technical efficiency you have to consider the efficiency of all the components involved in that based on that we have to calculate uh, i don't know over the focus of the question the power generation efficiency or overall efficiency of the plant 
So overall efficiency of the plant is you need to consider the efficiency of each and every equipment involved in that. Okay, sir. What is the uh, general rating of a microgrid? Is it in megawatt or kilowatt level? Yeah, I said that, right. Micro, microgrid, mostly up to 5 megawatt, it is considered to be a microgrid. Oh. Oh. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, which communication method is reliable for microgrid? Not yet uh, proved, and we cannot answer this uh, straight away. Because communication methods, they are all uh, communication engineers are coming up with different techniques. Uh, even in India, for uh, smart metering applications, uh, different communication methods are used. As far as I heard from different utility, Pondicherry they used GSM technique. In Northeast, in one state, Tripura state, they used PLC, power line communication. And in dem some demonstration projects, they used. Uh, LoRa, which is a low power uh, network, six low pan network. So there is a reliability point of view. We have to study the communication technology. We have to come back. What kind of reliability we need? What kind of application it is? It is only mere smart metering application, or we are going for any kind of real time control and automation. Based on that, we have to choose the communication technique. A one word or one sentence, we cannot give answer for this. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Then, how to sync uh, another query is how to synchronize in a microgrid? How to synchronize in a microgrid? It depends on the source what you are having. The microgrid architecture, what I have shown here, uh, has a common DC bus. So, synchronization is very simple. You have to match the voltage, right. Uh, but AC side, there is an inverter uh, and the grid. So inverter and grid should be synchronized as you synchronize any grid connected inverter. Through PLL, we have to synchronize the inverter. Okay, thank you, sir. Then, uh, How the stability of microgrid can be ensured under small signal disturbance as it is uh, almost zero inertial source circuit. Yeah. Almost zero inertial, then you cannot ensure the stability definitely. There is a possibility of the system going instable. So you need to have some inertial system or uh, virtual inertia system. That's why now it is advised to, to have battery storage systems available in the microgrid so that your small signal stability problems can be avoided. Okay, sir. Uh, there is one query uh, for power system stability analysis of microgrid. What type of configuration should be considered? Sorry, what is the question? For for power system stability analysis of microgrid, what mm -hmm. type of microgrid configuration should be considered? See, the question is wrong, I say. Okay. Because once the uh, you, are, you choose the configuration, for that chosen configuration, you do the stability analysis. Right. I, I will choose the configuration first based on the available sources, based on the desired uh, DC voltage, based on the desired AC voltage, I will choose the configuration. Then for that configuration only, I have to do the stability analysis. For doing stability analysis, we should not choose the configuration. To choose the configuration, then do the stability analysis for that configuration. Okay, sir. Uh, now, uh, uh, what is the control strategy adopted for the converter used in the micro uh, microgrid built in campus, in our campus, I guess? in our campus. What is the control strategy? See, our yes. campus is having an inverter, which is a grid connected inverter. So it operates only when the grid is present. Otherwise, the inverter will not produce any switching signal. The controller is designed in such a way that if grid is present, grid voltage is taken as the reference for producing a sinusoidal pulse width SPWM signals for firing the MOSFETs or IGBT, whatever is available in the network. 
if the grid is not present if there is any failure in the grid immediately the operation of the inverter is stopped most of the grid connected inverters are operating in that way only whenever the grid is failed the inverter will not work so that's why when you purchase an inverter for a micro grid during the specification they ask whether you are going to go for a grid connected operation or you want autonomous mode of operation also when you want to have an autonomous mode of operation the inverter should have uh, their own control because it should generate its own reference based on that reference the output voltage magnitude and frequency will be maintained if it is used only with the grid it won't be operated with uh, operated in autonomous mode so while purchasing the inverter we have to specify whether our micro grid is going to operate only with the grid or without grid also i want to operate okay sir um then one more is that uh, is there any standards available in terms of making micro grid to a smart grid uh, that is is the standards are global or with respect to country is it changing yeah um, it, it it should be the standards should be a global standard because the equipment what we are going to use or uh, can be uh, purchased from uh, different vendors it need not be only the indian vendor it can be the vendor from an abroad so whenever we define a standard it should be a global standard but right now the smart grid standards are uh, growing ieee is bringing out its own uh, standard iec standards are also coming up uh, but it not, not at mature the standards are coming up once the standards are ready then we can avoid this um, a monopoly nature of the vendors so smart grid standards are growing it is not matured right now i truly smart grid standard forum is available they are preparing the standards it should be a global standard okay sir uh, as we are uh, in short of time we are winding up as of now you may contact the speaker through his email id for clearing further queries thank you very much sir thank, thank you, you for being with us yeah, thank you dr and, and, and supporting the workshop sir it is my yeah. uh, duty <laughs> uh, yes thank you thank you very much sir. okay i thank our speaker dr mp selvan and participants for making the session interactive we will join back at 10 am tomorrow for the third session on stability analysis and operation control of power electronized power systems by dr sikibu please join with a new link which is sent by email thank you all thank you sir for joining us and thank you the participants so we thank hope you sir thank you morning i'm leaving okay thank you sir thank you, thank you sir okay, okay sir thanks. Hello all. New webex link is uh, mailed to all of us, so that that link will be uh, should be used for all, all the rest of the four days.